left, right. Welcome to the 2022 holiday gift guide. We got a whole bunch of good gifts. I'll include some links. If you check this out on Facebook or YouTube, you'll uh, be able to click those links, check out some of this stuff, see what it looks like. And uh, happy holidays. I hope you buy some of these things. Some of them are pretty damn cool. Some of them a little expensive, but they do vary in uh, pricing. Let me know what you think. See you on the other end. Happy holidays. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. Cheers. 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 Continue that thought in one second. I'll let you hit the intro first. Speaking of intros, welcome to Sip Talk, episode one, episode 206. Today is our 2022 holiday gift guide. Thank you for joining us. My name is Justin DiGiulio out of my basement in New Jersey, joined by James, the Bosonator Boswell, philosopher, professional referee, bartender, and most exciting of all, accountant down in sunny South Carolina. James, sorry I cut you off. <laughs> no, you're good. I don't, I don't know. It was. It might have been Forbes magazine or some news organization sent a check for like, 47 cents or something to a number of like f like famous rich people it, like millionaires and billionaires but people that were famous mostly for being rich to see if any of them would cash them yeah one of the people that they sent the check to was donald trump and he actually cashed the 12 cent or like the 12 cent or 47 cent check or something <laughs> uh i'm not i'm not surprised i'm not surprised so right now we're live on TikTok, we're live on Instagram, and we can't see your comments. So if you want to join us live, you got to join on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch, and we can read your comments live as we speak. Um, and if you're watching us after the fact, hopefully you subscribe on YouTube or any audio podcast platform. So to get into it, we've got a whole bunch of gifts. I asked uh, over the last 24 hours for listener suggestions as well now while i don't think their gift suggestions are quite as good as ours um if we have time towards the end we'll hit the listener suggestions i want to thank everybody who wrote in because there were some really good ones actually um i the way so you so the way that we've done this tonight is james has created his list i've created my list uh we're going to do some shared screen uh shared window and include some visuals for you guys that are watching on YouTube and Facebook and, uh, and we'll go from there, but, uh, it's middle of December right now. I want to wish everybody, irregardless of, uh, religion, a, uh, happy holidays. I want to warn you to stay away from the mistletoe. That's, you know, uh, sexual entrapment, definitely sexual assault. You're just walking into it. So keep your eyes up and, uh, <laughs> uh, James question for you. Where are you going to be spending Christmas? Are you going to be in South Carolina? Are you going to be in New York? What's your plan? I haven't decided yet. Um, there's a couple things in the mix in terms of where I may be. Um, some of it's also just financial, of just like staying in South Carolina is by definition my cheapest option. It could be a gift to yourself there. Yeah, I, I might be doing some traveling in like the first couple months of the winter though. So I, I got you. Um, all right. Well, hopefully I'll run into you relatively soon in person. Um, so where should we start? You want to, you, uh, I'm going to lead with my, my first gift and, uh, Go ahead. and then we'll hit yours. So let me do a little, uh, little shared screen for those of you watching us on the preferred live apps. Sorry guys, added the seven of you that are watching us. We prefer only a select number of you guys. Uh, so my first gift here is uh, is a house plant. <laughs> now, I don't know why I decided a house plant was a good gift, but I don't think it's a bad one. I do. I think uh, you know you want to aim for a house plant that's relatively easy to keep alive. I think having some house plants brings some warmth and life to uh, to the room, 
And uh, you don't want to you don't want to give somebody with too much of a burden. That's why I'm, you know, I'm going to suggest a few house plans. What's your what's your pushback on this, James? It's that you have to keep it alive. And like, what if you're a single guy? House plants are a liability because, yeah. like, if you bring a chick back to your place and the house plants are all dead, you can be like. He can't even keep something alive in like the most favorable of environments. Well, to to my single friends, uh, I'll give you I'll give you my list of uh, plants that I would suggest. But the key to keeping a house plant alive, and it's really just one ingredient, the key is water, just water. All right, <laughs> that's it, that's it. So I'm going to recommend. I got a picture up here on Amazon, twenty five bucks, fifteen inch tall plant uh, in in. By the springtime, it'll probably be uh, another 30% bigger. But that's a peace lily. It's just a leafy green plant, and then it gets some nice uh, big white lily flowers on it. But I'd also suggest a fig tree, a rubber plant, or a money tree. Now, I know, James, it sounds like he's not much of a plant. Oh, I, I mean, I'd take a money tree. <laughs> the money tree, I, I think, are probably the toughest of the, the four plants to keep alive. But, but that. I mean, I just like the concept of it. And that's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna go with first. Now you've got. Uh, you want to hit your uh, your next one here? Uh, yeah. The the HP Reverb G2 VR headset. I actually got one as a gift, and it's great. Um, the problem with a lot of the the VR headsets, at least the older ones, was one like you'd have to install these pods like somewhere near your desk into the wall or something and the pods would sense where the vr headset was so like for the motion detection um this one has cameras on it so you don't need to install any pods into the wall um mm. the, the resolution on the the cameras is really good it's easy to set up um the only downside of it is that you do need pretty solid hardware in your in your computer to run it just oh, so because this links to your this links to your computer yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a wire and like a little. Yeah, you have to plug it in. You need to run a Display Port and a USB C into your computer. Wait, so you're wired to the computer? Well, yeah. Oh boy. So, <laughs> like, here's the headset, and you can see here's the wire, but the wire's long. No, I believe you. I believe you. It sounds a bit like a liability, but I, I got you there. Now, uh, this is a five hundred dollar investment. Yeah, but it's really cool. <laughs> and it works really well. All right, all right. Uh, maybe you'll let me let me try it out. Um, yeah, if but, you ever come down here. But yeah, I got to get down there. But it's expensive, so it must be good. Uh, yeah, and, and our gifts are all over the place in terms of cost. Our gifts are all over the place in terms of cost, and I think that that's why it's a, a pretty good uh, gift guide. So I'm going to share with you one that I got for myself. I think we're both kind of speaking from experience of stuff that we got. Yep, that's uh, how I cheated. But no, I mean that's that's when we were talking beforehand. I was like, you were like, well, I don't have much of a list. I'm like, just what's some cool shit that you got that you like over the last year so you can vouch for it. The biggest thing I hate about gift guides is it's just a bunch of bogus bullshit that mm -hmm. that people are either being paid back for promoting, um, or it's just like it's just not tailored to anybody. So we're a yeah, I, I was I, I went on some websites and it's all this like bullshit beauty products where like it's like rub your face with this thing and the vibrations will make you look younger. No, guy, oh, always a good uh, gift for girls though, guys. <laughs> if you're gonna get some a, a girl something that vibrates, like cut out the middleman, man. Don't pretend that it's going on her face. <laughs> uh, so look, so I've got uh, I got the VidBox video conversion, and this allows you to take an RGA cable dock it to your computer whether it's a windows or mac machine and it comes with the software very basic stuff but it allows you to take uh vhs or cassette tapes or you know whatever you can plug into an rga cable and bring it right to your computer with their software and uh, i've managed to take like 50 home videos and just record them on my computer as uh, uh digital files and you'll be shocked how terrible the resolution is. <laughs> Not because the, the program's bad, but because the technology to make the video was bad. Yeah, the actual video camera, the frame of the video camera. I, I just, I'm like, there's no wide screen here. There's no, there's, yeah, but I even really like, wonder what's the, going on. The resolution is terrible too, just because yeah. that's the technology that existed 30 years ago. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny, but it is cool. And now I can share these home videos back with family even though i don't think you can see behind me but i've got a whole 
I've got a whole like 1980s Sony tower with that kind of translucent uh, glass door on it. And I've got a DVD player, a VHS player, a dual cassette player in this thing. So a record player. So I'm really trying to bring back some of the. Does it uh, have eight track? There's no eight track. I, ne- I didn't exist during the eight track time. It, it, it didn't exist during my time. Whereas I didn't exist during the record era but records existed during during my time well when records have made a roaring comeback yeah uh, i'm waiting for cassette tapes too but i don't i don't think they will all right let me uh let me uh, so what do you have next next one um and this is for someone who you want to spend a lot of money on to to kill in a way that no one will ever suspect you of having done it and that's the kawasaki ninja h2r (laughs) <laughs> this is a sport bike that makes 300 horsepower. Um, so uh, 300 horsepower is a lot, a lot of horsepower, by the way, uh, especially for a motorcycle. How, so you're buying, so you're basically buying somebody a vehicle in this gift, and it's a motorcycle. How much does one of these run? I think like 50,000. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> it's it's the highest power like production motorcycle out there. Thing does like 250 miles an hour. And you got this last year. No, I did not. <laughs> you did get, I, you, you got a Kawasaki though, right? I did. I got the Ninja 650, which makes 65 horsepower. <laughs> and I'm perfectly no. happy with that. No, that is a, that is a badass looking bike. It's black. It's got some green, green framing to it. But yeah, that's one where like, if you don't want to see that person for the next, like on the next holidays, get them a bike like that because. Oh, it's a I, fucking death wish. Yes. Um, like how much, cause I, like your bike makes like 80 horsepower and I'm sure it feels plenty fast for you. Right. Oh yeah. So imagine dropping like a hundred or 150 pounds off the bike and then quadrupling the yeah, power. getting almost four times. Yeah. That, no way. Uh, all right. We're going to keep moving. I got uh, this one. I thought was a, a pretty cool gift. Actually, they make these game consoles uh, that have a whole bunch of the original games because we have a lot better processing power now and we also have much bigger hard drives. And by bigger, I, I mean I don't mean physical size. I mean capacity-wise. So they, this one has 81 of the original Sega games, Sonic, Mortal Kombat, uh, a bunch of the Sega games, and you can just plug it into your computer HDMI. Uh, so I, I think that's a pretty, pretty cool if gift. If you think about like the advances in storage, so... If you have, if you were to go through, I don't know, like if you watch a five minute long YouTube video, that five minute long YouTube video has like requires more storage than all 81 of those games by yeah. a wide margin. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, but if you, if you actually look at the screen, you can see they've got Nintendo. I actually bought like an all in one and it was kind of a knockoff and I was, I was not happy just doesn't have the processing power this one is a sega classic game console by made by sega so you know they're at least they're they're branding it they're endorsing it it's it's got a little more power than something else what uh uh you get these earplugs here all right i'll let you i'll let you bring the, bring the next one i just and these ones are super simple if you're anybody that likes music especially going to concerts having concert grade earplugs that are comfortable and like don't just muffle out everything, but are designed to kind of let in the sound that you want to hear, but like across the spectrum. So that way you're not losing out on like the fidelity of the sound. Um, and I really any... like the design of these click on. Yeah. That and like Is... zoom in a little bit. It's a, but it's, it's a, yeah. So it's, really basic but they're well made they, you've got a little carrying case that you can just like strap to something or put in your pocket a couple different sizes i've been really happy with them so anybody that likes going to live shows that's a that's a good gift to get them and these are pretty expensive you could finance them if you needed to right yeah 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 if you need to you can pay in four interest free and in, interest free installments um <laughs> <who's laughs> I, I, financing a 30 dollar purchase man so they cost they cost 30 bucks um being being the point that they're not, they're not too bad um all right so now this next one i actually think is badass i may actually pick this up uh for a christmas party i'm going to this year i don't know what you're gonna think on this one this is a bone in uh ham bone 
and you basically make like prosciutto. So it comes with this knife. It comes with this nice knife. And you can literally just slice paper thin pieces of uh, dry aged ham. Yeah. So when I lived in Spain, you could get like jamón de Iberico in pretty much any grocery store, and it's really good. Um, but yeah, the point is you have like you have to slice it super thin. Yeah. Like, otherwise, you're just kind of eating rock hard. <laughs> like it, it, like paper thin. <laughs> Because when you do uh, that, like it'll almost like melt in your mouth, and it's really yeah, good. That's, that's what I was gonna say. When it's paper thin, once it, once it's on your your tongue, the warmth and the moisture in your mouth just kind of melts the fat in this dry aged tam. Whereas if it's not paper thin, you just kind of get this literally rock hard piece that's only the surface is going to melt. And yeah, and then it's the just kind of chewy. Not surface. It, it, like the preparation yeah. or the the slicing of it is so critical. And that's. That is the only issue with getting something like this yourself is that if you're just offering it to people to do it themselves, they're not going to enjoy it the way it's 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 meant to be. Um, but I've been to some restaurants where they just bring it out, slice it for you. Uh, I think it's very badass. So so this is a two hundred dollar, fifteen to seventeen pound. Uh, I'm actually surprised it's not more expensive. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was they they had some for 150 bucks too that were like 11 12 pounds. Uh, but I think that would be a if you're going to a big Christmas party where there's going to be 15 20 or more people where you know you're not going to be left with five six of the <laughs> the, the the leg left there. Um, you know, I think it could be a, a pretty wow, there'd be a decent wow factor and people would legitimately enjoy it. Like 10 pounds is more than enough. I I mean, it's it's a it's a big honking piece of ham, and it comes. This one comes with a decent looking knife. I found some that that came with kind of this crappy looking knife, but uh, but I like that one. What do you have next on here? I'm going to skip ahead since we're talking about knives. Oh boy, now I got to find the tab. Come on, man. Well, um, <sighs> anything by either Wustoff or Henkels um, of their their top line models, so like the Wustoff Classic line kitchen knives. For anybody that is in the kitchen a lot, like like their six or eight inch chef's knife, you can just use it for literally everything. Well, here you got their classic nine piece block, and this this one six hundred bucks. You, this is kind of their their top of the line uh, kitchen knife set. Comes with steak knives, uh, kitchen scissors. Yeah, so classic knife. is their top their top line, and all it's really well made. Like. If you take care of them, the lives will the knives will last you a lifetime. The lives will last you a lifetime. Well, I mean, yes, also that. <laughs> uh, but it, it actually looks like a nice piece of wood there that, that came with it too. That's uh, uh, the knife block. It comes with a block itself to dock the knives in. Um, but it it's a nice looking uh, nice looking set there. Five hundred ninety five bucks. But you know, in terms of knives. You're getting every knife that you would that you would need. Um, all right, where to next, you? Uh, your turn, and then I know where I'm going after that. All right, you get you got to stay somewhat in in order here. Let I'm going to go, go back. back to being in order. All right, I like that. Let me go back to my uh, my ham here, and uh, we're going to go with these uh, wool socks. So uh, years ago, I went through the Orlando Airport in Sweden. Not Orlando, but Orlando Airport, and I picked up a really nice, uh, a couple, like three or four pairs of uh, wool socks, and I have not been able to find a nice pair of wool socks since then. And uh, the ones I have, the couple pair that I have, are kind of nearing the end of their lifetime. So I've been searching for new wool socks, and I came across these alpaca ones. They're very thick, uh, 100% wool, and they're uh, they're some nice looking socks. As you can see here, my only issue with wool socks is that some of them are so thick that like you can't wear your shoes with them because like oh, you wear oh, your shoes well, for normal would... thin socks and then you put the th thick wool socks on. You can't even get your feet in. I wouldn't look at these as a pair of socks that you would wear anywhere other than just kind of lounging at home. I wouldn't I wouldn't think you're going to slip a pair of of shoes on top of these uh, also because they are meant to keep your feet very warm. So maybe if well, you had I mean, a pair if, of if boots it's in the cold. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you were, if you were literally like in a cabin in the snow and you threw a pair of boots over top, that would be one acceptable way to wear them. 
but just regular daily life, walking to and from school or work, I, I don't think this would be that pair of socks. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. So my next one is a pair of Sony um, 1000 XM5 headphones. So noise canceling Bluetooth headphones. Um, it's pretty widely accepted that Sony's noise cancellation is about the best in the in in that product line. Uh, I've got a pair of the XM3s or the XM4s, and like with some noise canceling headphones, like you'll it'll cancel, but like if you're listening to something, there's still kind of like this echoey kind of canned feel to the sound. Whereas with like the Sony's that I have, like it's just perfect. The the noise canceling yeah. works really well, and like there's no distortion to whatever you're listening to. So that's the WH. 1000 xm5 and these are black headphones they are super sleek looking they don't look like a piece of electronics uh they they actually look like almost like a sleep mask <laughs> i don't know how else to to describe it but there's a kind of a sleek element to it but then nothing flashy like you're, it's not you're not drawing attention there yeah uh, and that's I, another thing is like they're understated yeah i think they're they're pretty cool um all right let me go back here see what we've got next um oh i know what we've got next so uh every year i suggest a little uh let me make sure I'm on the right tab magazine subscription now this year given a lot of people have been cooped up inside for uh, for a while i'm recommending the outside magazine subscription. The cool thing about magazine subscriptions, you get somebody a magazine subscription for Christmas or for a birthday or any event. What I like to do is I go to the store and uh, buy that magazine for $3.99 or whatever. And uh, and then you sign that person up for the magazine subscription and you give them the magazine with a little note saying, you, you know, the, here's the gift that just keeps on giving. Yeah, you know? there's 12 more coming. There's, there's probably, yeah, because you bought the first one at the at the magazine stand. So, um, so you got those coming to you. Uh, let's see what do we have next here. Oh, I, I got what's next. Uh, all right, you, so the next one I have not seen. Oh, I'm, I'm curious. Kurto vodka red. So I figure like we always recommend some form of liquor and I think Ukrainian vodka is what you should go with this year. Is this a product of Ukraine? Yes, it is. Hmm. Very interesting. It's a it's a very simple looking bottle, Kruto. I don't know what that means in in Ukrainian Russian. Um, let's see if I. Oh can yeah, just... support Ukraine and enjoy drinking something while you do it. Yeah, it's a nice uh, nice bottle. Um, and have you seen that at a liquor store? Or you just found it online. I just Googled Ukrainian liquor and I wanted to see what was out there. Oh, all right. No, that was, that's a good idea. Um, all right. Next up here, I've got, you're not going to like this one, but I actually think it's pretty cool. The, uh, Google nest doorbell. I actually just got one of these. Uh, this one is battery powered. So you charge it once a month or so. Um, and it just lets you know when somebody's approaching the door, lets you know if a package is left at the door, also lets you know if a package disappears from the door. So I basically get three daily notifications because we're getting a lot of deliveries. Um, one person at the door, two package left at door, and then when I pick up the package and bring it inside and open it up, it says passage. The passage package uh, is no longer at the front door, and. Uh, it's a pretty sleek looking doorbell. Yes. I yeah, I'm not a big fan. I don't want to like plug my home into a corporate surveillance network. <laughs> you don't like anything smart, but most nope. people who are, who are open to the smart life, um, they're down for it. So let's see, we got Wustoff. Uh, Wustoff. Uh, measured pours from bar liquor bottles. All right, you got. This is like a stocking stuffer. Yeah. Um, you, this is a 24 pack. That means you got to have freaking 24 bottles. Or you could uh, just have 24 um, friends. So, but this is what they have at the bar on the top of their bottles, which makes for an easy pour. Um, 
And well, the important uh, thing is that it makes it so that regardless of how full the bottle is, like it pours at a consistent rate. So it'll pour one shot at about a four count. So when you can learn it, you, you no longer need to use a jigger or measure or anything. You just hold the bottle and you count and you know how much liquor you've poured. And these ones come with little rubber caps as well. So you're not just constantly leaving the bottle open. Oh, the, uh, the rubber caps are super important. Well, yeah. Otherwise, you could get your alcohol could actually get a little infected um, and evaporate. It, it evaporates. And if you have like, it, like fruit flies can get in there. It's just, yeah. Like capping your, your liquor bottles at the end of the night is, is really good practice. Um, all right. So last year I recommended a, uh, a fleece lined or a wool lined uh, denim jacket because I was really wanting one. Uh, this year, I'm going to go ahead and recommend just a regular denim jacket. I've uh, I've had my eyes out looking for a, a good deal on a denim jacket. I haven't found one that I pulled the trigger on. I want to try it on first. But here's a pretty cool looking one from Ralph Lauren. This one's 188 bucks, which I guess probably isn't bad if you're buying direct from Ralph Lauren. You probably find it at a Macy's for half the price. Um, but uh, but it's a cool looking jacket. What do you think of this thing? I don't do denim. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't wear. I own uh, literally zero pieces of, of denim. Uh, I haven't okay. worn denim in probably over two decades. I've gotten into the denim lately for a while. I wasn't much of a, a jeans guy, but, uh, I don't mind them so much. I mean, I prefer just wearing nice shorts all the time, but jean shorts, not quite the fashion statement they once they once were five decades ago. But I don't think they ever were. No, nah, maybe in the seventies, maybe the eighties. Um, all right. So your next one, I think, is something everybody should have in their home, whether they're bar people or not. Yeah. So I picked uh, like spheres, but there's all sorts of different shapes you can get. Um, I think spheres are cool, but like big blocks or like like regular size blocks. Um, but silicone ice molds, super easy, easy to use. Fill them up, put it in the freezer, wait a little while, you got ice. Easy to clean, easy to work with. And the other thing is like, unlike the plastic ones that you have to kind of like grapple with to get the ice out, it's silicone, it's bendy. Yeah, that, that I was just going to say the nice thing about the silicone ones is that you can flex the silicone better. I have a bunch of plastic ones. I have some silicone ones, but the plastic ones are a pain in the ass. Uh, and you don't want to hold it over your glass and then have it pop out because it will just, yeah, it's, just know, it, it's going to break the glass. Or if you have something in the glass, uh, it's going to splatter. The one, I I, one thing I would recommend against is they, they make these silicone ice trays that have like little dot ice where, and those things, it sounds cool. Cause you're like, Oh, a bunch of like really small pieces of ice. That could be handy. It ends up being a an epic pain in the ass to get all the ice out of the tray because the like little molds are too small. So make sure to get molds that have like cubes that are at least big enough. Yeah. And most of these spherical ones or even the big, big square ones are going to be about two inches wide. Yeah. And that's fine. They're, but I'm talking easy. like these ones are like half a centimeter. Mm. And, like I bought those. Like This is going to be cool, which I think if I want to skip ahead, if you're. If no, you no, don't, 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 ice, no, no, don't skip ahead. Don't don't. We don't need a spoiler. We'll, we'll get there. Hang All tight. Right. It, it, that's James' next one here. I'm going to I'm gonna interrupt your ice suggestions. I uh, We did a hot sauce contest in my office uh, this year, and we had some great hot sauces. One of the ones I was really surprised that I liked was Melinda's Habanero hot sauce. The one that I was given was Melinda's Habanero creamy wing sauce and i thought it was just going to be not very spicy and really creamy but it was actually a wicked spicy sauce that was cooled off just with the nice creaminess that uh that that you would wish for in a sauce that's way too hot and uh the spice factor is there the flavor factor is there and even though it's crazy spicy it's definitely palatable this one is eight ninety nine, and uh, in my opinion, definitely worth it. It says it says three flames out of five. I would give it a four out of five, given that the flame scale literally is completely arbitrary. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, all right, so let's uh, 
let's hit this next one that you you suggested you suggested uh, back on the ice path. So yeah, this is something that I bought for myself last year, and uh, it's just been great. And it makes the the little pebble ice, which is great for like sodas and stuff like that. The one thing it's not good for is you do not want to use it as the ice that you're shaking a cocktail with because the ice cubes are small. They melt down too much. You want to use larger cubes for when you're shaking a cocktail, but it's really great for like tea, lemonade, soda, or if you've already got an already chilled cocktail, pour pour in the cocktail over that once it's already chilled so that they don't melt down as fast. But this thing's super easy. You just, you plug it in and you pour water in the bottom and it makes ice. Yeah, you don't have to have it hooked up to a tap. Nope. Um, and it looks like really the big sell here is it comes available in two colors. You got that nice uh, graphite gray, and uh, and the regular. Yeah, and it's black. self-cleaning. Um, it's one of those ones where, like, my roommates were like, "Dude, this was a great purchase. Everybody uses it. Everybody likes it." Uh, it, it does it say it has an automatic? Uh, you can hook it up to water. Is that you is that can. What? Ooh. I chose not to. Mm. And self-cleaning is pretty cool as well. Men will uh. add water. <laughs> is that what I said? Yeah, M-A-N-N-U-L. Oh, that's awesome. That's you know, that happens when you when you produce stuff in China. I don't I don't see it anymore. Yeah, um, let's see. Uh yeah, men will. <laughs> um all right. So an ice maker, that's a countertop ice maker, which is just pretty cool. I, if you don't have an automatic ice maker in your freezer, th- that one's definitely worth it. Worth it. Um, all right. Here's one that is, I, it might be tough s- sticking them into a, uh, a stocking, but this is a great, super cheap gift. Gift that keeps on giving. Uh, these are silicone can covers that are designed to look like soda and they oh, actually look like soda from afar for your and, functioning alcoholic friends yeah so uh you got you got a coquec cola spritzy sprito uh Pixipi, yeah <laughs> dr peeper <laughs> and mountain Pew. dr peeper that's the one that when you're stalking somebody that's the can you want to bring <laughs> Mm. And, and mountain pew <laughs> but but realistically like at you know at a few feet away they look they look legit as hell yeah. i like how it says golf accessories <laughs> is that what it says look. uh yeah i don't i don't know where they are in my basement but i had them i had them ready to go this summer i just i never i never ended up going anywhere this summer that uh having open can was was illegal which uh begs me to ask james what are you drinking right now bush ice Bush ice, very nice. I had a little doers when we started, and uh, I got this Sierra Nevada here, uh, liquid hoppiness IPA. It's a seven percenter, not bad, very IPA, uh, but not borderline too much. Uh, all right, what's uh, what is next on our list? I think we're, we're coming um, to the, end here. the battery backup power strip. For anybody that works from home, like you, they, I don't know about you, but for some reason, the the power where I live likes to just shut off for sometimes, and that's okay. not because I didn't pay the bill. So how does this power strip uh, help you? It's got a big battery in it, so if you lose power, you'll you'll have a battery backup for some amount of time. So like, it's not going to work forever but at least you're not going to lose whatever you were doing at the time. I imagine that ha- that would depend on how many items you have plugged into it and how powerful those. Well, so it puts out 360 watts, which is decent. Yeah, it's actually, I, you know what? You just sent this power strip. I didn't, I was like, oh, that's weird. He just bought a power strip and he's suggesting it because it looks cool or it was a good deal. Uh, but no, realistically, I did not realize it had the battery backup option. I think that's really cool. I think that's very useful. This one's not cheap. Uh, this one's 67 bucks. 
But, but yeah, like if, when you lose power, being able to at least be able to save your work and not have everything shut off on you immediately, handy. Um, let's see. What do we got next here? Uh, all right. Want to say hi to Rag F on TikTok, who says, you are so amazing, my dear friend. Say hi to Cocahannis, who says, Justin, what's good? Finally got my license. Hi there, Cocahannis. Um, all right, let me uh, let me hit my next tab that's open here. This uh, this was a last minute ad, but my sister is asking me about this, and uh, I think everybody needs one of these. I'll tell you why. This is a hand mixer. You can get one for you know for thirty bucks, really. This is a good one. This is the one I recommended. Um, it's got a digital timer uh, to tell you how long you've been blending. And uh, you you a hand mixer user? No, I think I have one here, and the only person that's ever used it has been my mom. <laughs> Sounds about I'm right. Pretty sure it was purchased by my mom too. Uh, my, you, you, you have one there. You said yes. Oh, very nice. Yeah, my mom needs it to uh, to cook various things when she comes down, and uh, and I got it. But you know what I've been making lately when we have guests come over? I like to do a little cheese plate when when we have guests over. So I get a couple of hard cheeses, a couple of soft cheeses, and then I get a, a, a small tub of ricotta cheese. And then I take that ricotta, put it in a mixing bowl, add a little olive oil, and uh, I use the hand mixer at pretty high speed for four or five minutes and make this nice creamy whipped ricotta. Pour a little more olive oil over the top, some, uh, some uh, salt flakes, and uh, maybe a, a, a sprig of basil as a garnish and it makes a great a great cheese dip hmm. and ricotta in terms of cheeses uh one of the more healthy uh one of the more higher protein cheeses of course you're adding the olive oil i don't know if that helps much but mm -hmm. um, olive oil is considered to be like healthy fat though but but i'm going to tell you if you're the hand mixer is a, a great gift and one thing that you can use a hand mixer on pretty often is that nice whipped ricotta? What is uh, what is next here for you? Is this uh, um, since we're we're, we're going to stay in the kitchen for a minute? A culinary butane torch. Oh yeah, uh, I don't have one of these. I, I'm going to have to pick one of these things up one of these days. Uh, this is a Sandico butane. Yeah, there's all sorts of ones out there. They're all pretty much the same, but they're super handy. Like for for doing like a a quick sear on on dishes. But it's also useful for like if you're doing like a bonfire out back or whatever, it's easier to use that to light the fire than to like have to battle with a lighter or a match or something, especially if it's windy. Oh, this looks like it would be great for soufflés. Uh, it probably would be if I knew how to make a souffle. <laughs> I don't even know what a souffle is. I don't, I don't really either. But yeah, there's all sorts of things you can use, and and they're just they're also just fun. I like how the, the butane torch is used in the majority of the photos advertising the butane torch, but one of the pictures is just a two year, two and a half year old girl making cookies. I really <laughs> wish they had the two and a half year old girl using the torch. With the, with the flame gun. <laughs> with the point of the wrong way. <laughs> um, oh, man. Oh, you know, that reminds me. I got to get, I get some uh, little nieces and nephews. I keep seeing this, well, not lately, but I keep seeing this ad for... Uh, baby's first fire kit oh that sounds good <laughs> and it's it's just an empty box and you can wrap other gifts in it but i've been meaning to pick that up hopefully none of them are watching right now i won't i won't spoil the gift but yeah you should um, get like toy matches and toy lighters for kids ba baby's baby's first fire i think would be i think would be a really good one um all right what do we have what do we have next here let me close that one out um are you at the end of your list here? I got three more, I think. Um, uh, well, mm, I I canceled out the next two on your list, actually, which I feel I feel bad for because we already we, we can mention them. Um, well, all right, I'll, I'll hit them real quick then. So, like the cast iron really skillet. Cool. Yeah. Like everyone needs a cast iron skillet. They're they're bulletproof. They're we useful for all it. sorts of cooking. The reason we're skipping it is because we mentioned it in a in a past gift guide. But James is right. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you need to get a cast iron skillet. We'll 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 add the link to all of the stuff that we're talking about 
I'll put it when we publish the episode, which will probably be sometime tomorrow. Uh, I'll include links to all this stuff on my Facebook so you guys can see a cast iron skillet. What, are, what does one of those run? Um, the one that I was looking at, like a Lodge cast iron skillet. Lodge is a like, reputable brand, like 30 bucks for a standard size one. They're not super expensive. Yeah, which makes yeah. sense when you think about it because it's just iron. <laughs> it's just molded, molded iron. The thing about cast iron skillets, though, is that you really do have to keep them conditioned. You can't put them in the dishwasher. You can't just wash them with soap and water and put them away. If you do ever, one, you have to season them first, which means you have to like bake it really high temperature with oil on there. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it ever does get, if you ever do use soap on it, which is not a bad idea every once in a while, take a light amount of soap, wipe it down. Uh, you have to then re-oil it. Otherwise, it will rust. Yep. Um, all right. Let's, uh, you want to give, you want to give the, uh, the one, the last one on your list? The, the crocodile board? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. It's a game. Click it. Um, yeah, so scroll down. So the game is like, you kind of sit opposite somebody. So, if you're playing like one on one, then like you guys sit opposite each other and you've got these little discs and you flick the disc and your goal is to get the disc into the, the hole in the middle. But it's a really simple game that I haven't actually had the chance to play. It's something that I kind of want to get. <laughs> um, but from what I've heard, it's like a really fun game to play and it's it's also good if you're playing with like three or four people it's just it's a it's a fun party game and it's unique because like it's you, you're you, it's like a physical game instead of just like rolling dice or drawing cards or something you're it, actually it looks, doing something it looks almost like a finger golf it, <laughs> like it looks it actually it, it's a cool looking game it, it looks you know it's interactive you know so there and there's a level of skill to it you know mm -hmm. like you play uh, you know, like a, a regular board game where you kind of roll the dice. There's a lot lost in terms of, of skill. Uh, and this this is four hundred and twenty four dollars, James. Yeah, that, that's very expensive for this. <laughs> set of you can get cheaper ones, but yeah, that's it's expensive because to like it's high quality wood, high quality polish, and uh, here, the pegs here's one for and ninety other. bucks. Here's, here, well, I'll include the one for for ninety bucks. Yeah. Which you'd probably be able to have a good time on that one too, but like, there's <laughs> not a as not as good of a time though. I I don't know. I don't... Uh, uh, well, look, here's your sales on it. The monthly revenue uh, that Amazon makes on this is fifty five thousand uh, dollars, which I think is uh, and there's twenty of these sell daily. How do you see that? I'll I'll, I'll share with you after the podcast. Um, but it's it, this is a it's a cool looking game. I would totally be be down to pick up uh, to pick up one of these boards. Not at four hundred bucks. Maybe this eighty nine dollar one that seems to sell considerably better. Uh, oh yeah, there's little wood discs and a little wood hole in the middle. Um, it's a cool looking game. Never heard of it before. You you've totally blown my mind with uh, with this one here. Um, and then. Let's see. Is this the end of my list as well? Well, I've got the the one more that I'm not allowed to talk about. But oh, I'm you can mention it. Yeah, like the <laughs> infrared thermometer gun, handy for all sorts of stuff. You you Cooking, had that. It must it must be a good gift because you had it on last year's also. Uh, it'll it'll be on next year too. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, so that must that must be a good one. All right, let's uh, let me share this last one here. This is a bit of a gag gift, but I, I kind of like it. I almost got it this year. Um, this is the uh, Fireplace Aerator Poker. And uh, it's just a big, long brass stick. It's pretty badass looking. Stick it next to your fireplace. Look at that thing. Isn't that, isn't that cool looking? Be good to ward off an attacker with. That's, so, so you know what made me think of this? So for, for those of you ha who have seen the staircase docu series it's like an eight or nine episode docu series a murder mystery about this pretty well off guy and his you know the story is him and him and his wife are out back enjoying a glass of wine she ducked in early as they as they often do they sit by the by the pool and talk 
at the end of some long days, enjoy a glass of wine. She uh, she went in early and uh, she went inside, started walking up the staircase and uh, and fell over backwards, knocked her head on the corner of the wall, bled out all over the place. And uh, and the husband was was convicted uh, of murder and, and ended up uh, appealing. And I think he's out now. But they had they had said the murder weapon was so they, and it split the family in half. Because half the family sided with the husband, the other other half of the family was like, no, we, you know, we know their marriage wasn't perfect. He must have killed her. What could he have killed her with? Well, one of the relatives that turned against him was like, well, 17 years ago, I bought him a uh, brass aerator poker for their fireplace. And I don't see it in their living room. So that must have been how he killed her. Here's your aerator. <laughs> um, but pretty cool, looking, in my opinion. Oh, well, I'm glad that he and I had the same idea. <laughs> um, that's that on the list. Let's see. What do we have left for time here? Oh, we crushed this list. We're, we're only three quarters of the way through the show. Yeah, so, I got to roll in about five minutes or so. But All right. Well, look, we got, we, got some time to, uh, we got some time to share, and I'll be pretty quick on this. Um, actually, do you? Uh, we'll go back and forth. You have this in your notes in front of you? I'm seeing uh, a few ideas on there that I really like. Okay, so uh, why don't you lead with the first one? Um, Matt Averill suggests a Mont Blanc pen. Mont Blanc pens are phenomenal. Uh, they, and and he also suggests business card holder, which is nowhere near as cool as a Mont Blanc pen. <laughs> uh, now I think uh, Mont Blanc pen's a nice pen. It's also an expensive pen. It is. Uh, you you have to be giving it to the right person in order in order for it to be appreciated. That's that's my think on that. But those are cool gifts uh, and a nice business card holder. Again, it could be a good gift. That would be a good gift for a boss or somebody who, who so, somebody who your relationship is is through work. Um, I had a professor that got one as like a graduation gift when he got his PhD. Hmm. Um, next I got, uh, Kaylin with, uh, now these are kind of general, but for female books, spa or perfume or for male books, electronics or spa. So this book seemed to be, uh, gender irrelevant. So I don't know about you, but like, I'm not going to a spa. I'm not a spa person at all. I, I'm, I'm not a spa person at all, but you know, uh, if, if you, if you know somebody who is everybody who likes spas, loves that as a gift hands down no quite you get them a spa gift card yeah they're all about it but you got to know that they like spas because like if you give would me not a spa gift, I'm like, I, I don't want this that would not be something i would i would guess on um all right uh next one up is a uh, bibliophile heidi who created a, a brand of tonics called awakened tonics you have to google that uh, there's some pretty cool flavors I think it's mostly uh, a female directed type of tonics that, that is supposed to affect you and, and heal you and things like that. But I saw it's really cool branding. Uh, I'd love to love to th throw some photos up there. I don't have any in, in front of me. You want to hit the next one here? The next two? Eli, what, Tem Massage? What is Tem? No, no oh, the, you, Eli the, Tem. Oh, that's his last name. Yeah. It's okay. Nice. Uh, massage. That's another one that, like, along with the spa, where like you don't want to guess at that because, like, me personally, I don't like massages. But for people that like massages, they love massages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not a I'm not a big massage guy, but um, but if somebody likes massage, getting them a gift card, not a bad idea. Well, if you're buying somebody a gift card for massage, don't just go buy a fifty or hundred dollar gift card for the massage place. Find out how much a massage costs and buy the gift card either for a massage or for an amount sufficient to cover the massage. And, just, and just try and include like the tip there too. So like you're probably looking at more like between two and three hundred bucks. Yeah, I don't know if you can include a tip in a gift card, but that would be if you're buying it, that would be a good thing to to ask about. Yeah. Uh, you wanna you wanna hit the next one? Um Coco Sinson says good deed to another. I don't know exactly what, but maybe that means like mowing someone's lawn. 
Yeah. I don't know. The Jew in me likes this because you don't have to spend money. Dude, no, 100%. If somebody was like, hey, you know, I can't really afford a Christmas present for you, but uh, I'll totally uh, mow your lawn. Yo, I would totally take it. You're going to come by and like spend two hours mowing my lawn and making my yard look better? Oh, that that counts. Yeah, I'm I'm all for that. Uh, Next one from Quick D Love. Sex gift box. Now, I didn't Google sex gift box. Well, I think it's a general idea. But I imagine probably there's some lubrication involved and maybe some toys involved. So uh, another Google one you it. don't want to guess at. You know, you gotta know. You probably gotta don't know. get it for your boss. Maybe significant other. Maybe Google it. I'm sure there's lots of different brands. If not, maybe I always like the idea of buying somebody a dildo as a gift because there's no better way to tell someone to go <laughs> fuck themselves. <laughs> I think at one of my my office, one of the, the Julia Group office holiday parties, someone was gifted. Uh, Gifted a, a dildo. Um, all right. Actually, sex gift box. Uh, not a bad business idea. Uh, next one. <laughs> you uh, want to be out of that business. Uh, you want to hit the you want to hit the, the, the next the next one there? Because I feel like this is one you would endorse. Just Jez- Jezebel Boutique spa gift card, which we've already talked about and a Bible. Um, <laughs> if someone gets me a Bible, like. I don't know if we're going to continue to be I friends. Yeah, I was, I was, I was literally going to say that may, that friendship may uh, may slow down a little bit. Uh, but you know, if 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 there's a religious person, you want to get them a nice. If someone nice... gets me a Bible as a gift, I'm buying them a dildo as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, you know, if you're getting somebody a Bible, make it a pretty one, maybe a hardcover one. I guess the same goes for a dildo. If you're getting somebody a dildo, get, <laughs> get a hardcover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, then we got Juan Esman. Now, this is this was out of all of the suggestions, uh, my favorite one. The suggestion was just with no context lotion. Um, so, I don't know if that's to compliment the dildos <laughs> I don't know. or the spa. I mean, um, a while back, uh, the girl that I was dating, um, she was living with her cousins and her cousins got her the following two gifts for Christmas. One of them was like a set or two of like nice, comfortable pajamas. And the other gift was like a whole bunch of like nice lotions and shampoos and stuff like that. And like the two of those gifts put together tell a really great story <laughs> of, look, we know you never leave the house. So here's something that you can be comfortable in, but you're starting to smell. Um, uh, you want to, you want to hit the, uh, the next one here. Um, oh, look, it's Laurel says jewelry, clothes, shoes, toys, and fine alcohol. So, so again, some of these are, are good suggestions, but I, I do think we need a bit more specificity with, uh, and that's, you know, again, the people are doing us a favor, throwing these out there. One of the next ones actually gives a lot of specificity. Actually, my next, uh, like the next gift I like a lot more. Well, hang, hang on. But I was <laughs> going to say jewelry, clothes, toys, shoes, fine alcohol, all good gifts. But you really have to know what that person is into so that you can find a specific brand or a specific item within those overall categories. You want to hit the next one? Uh, Bandy K for kid handmade gifts backslash coal. I love the idea of giving somebody coal. I think it's the kid makes the handmade gift. Uh, and and then you pay them in coal. And then, the, and then the kid gets coal. Yeah, I've, always, I've always loved the idea. I can't wait until I have kids old enough to do this. But that you, uh, at Christmas time, you wrap a cup, couple of empty boxes and uh, you pretend to get really upset Christmas morning. The fireplace roaring and you take one of these empty, empty boxes and you throw it in the fireplace. Um, one year, Casey really wanted like an Xbox 360. Yeah. And a couple weeks before, I had bought one for myself. <laughs> and so my parents bought him one. So what I did was I took my empty box. And I put and like I, I like lifted mine. I was like, how much does this weigh? All right, about like 12 pounds or so. So like I took a whole bunch of paper and some gym weights and put it in the box and then like oh. sealed it back up and everything. So it felt real. 
Oh, that's so bad. You know, one time I actually went out to the grill Christmas morning at like four o'clock in the morning and got a bunch of coal and stuffed in my sister's stocking. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that last year and I was like, I really did that? And she's like, yeah, yeah. You did. I, was, I was like, oh, I actually, I can envision myself like going out there barefoot in the morning to the grill, like wiping the snow off. Uh, all right, we're almost, we got, we got three more. Uh, Idea Wuchi says, and I, I believe these are all fragrances. Um, Your guess Matt, is as good as mine, Matt. Yeah, but, but otherwise it was just a bunch of really weird sounding things. Um, it looks but, like expensive perfume or cologne. Yeah, so I'll do my best to pronounce these. Uh, it's not going to be very good. Sound um, it out. Masculine Pluriel. Maison Francis, Kirk Dijon, Baccarat Rouge 540, Oud Satinwood. So, so yeah, the, 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 the perfumes or colognes are a pretty safe gift. You, you have to make sure that it's in that person's wheelhouse. Like some people don't like peppery. Some people don't like leathery. Some people don't like floral or fruity. Uh and it's, you know, uh, you just got to be careful. So, but if, if you know what they're into giving a cologne, I got a nice cologne for my birthday, actually really nice. I think, uh, wearing it now, I smell quite nice. Um, but it can be a very good gift. You just got to be, got to be careful and never, ever, ever buy your current person that you're in a relationship with something that one of your exes used to wear that, Ooh, that bad idea that idea and the reason is is that scent the olfactory is is tied to closest to memory you don't you don't want that shit in your life well it's it's not only that but if they ever find out yeah that would be a, a weird way to find out but but if but they were it, to find out like, why are you buying me your ex's perfume yeah that's, what does that's... that say about our relationship <laughs> um all right uh you want to hit the next one uh so it's gorgeous spa gift card so that's a really popular one apparently people like spas well, a lot more than i do it seems like it's all ladies that are saying that so well I, I guess if you're looking for a gift for a lady spa gift card will work um candles another one like chicks dig candles man like so candles are a safe gift for chicks um plush those are actually really nice. I, that's I a know. good she idea. Didn't say, she didn't say pillow or blanket. She just said plush throw. Plush throw. So well, well, I'm going to say plush throw pillow. I'm going to fill it in for her and say, like, throw pillows are nice. Whiskey or wine? Obviously, I'm in favor of that. Bar kit? Always in favor of that. Yeah, that, that was on one of our, our more recent ones. Yep. And, and uh, then we got Call Me Matilda Tiffany says tea towels. I don't. I don't know what a tea towel is. I have to have to admit. You know what a tea towel is? Anybody who's listening know what a tea towel <laughs> a tea towel is? Uh, hi, Justin. Greetings from Bolivia. Hi, uh, Quinta. Do you know what a tea towel is? <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, um, you but, but I don't. I, I'll tell you one thing. I I don't have any. So uh, can't be that some. bad of a guy. I could use them. Um, you could have some and just not know it. Or maybe uh, a, a, a spatula. Or wooden spoons. I'm actually, yeah, those I, are useful. I was gifted a really nice olive wood uh, uh, spoon thing. And uh, I was told you don't usually get things from olive wood. But several years ago, there was a big uh, infestation in a lot of the olive orchards or whatever. And a lot of the trees died. So you, if you go to like a Home Goods or, or Marshalls or something like that in the home section, you'll see a lot of these... Uh, Olive wood and olive is, is a pretty cool looking wood. Let me just hit the next one. Oh, they, like time. olive trees take forever to grow. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not something you'll typically find wood from. Um, chocolate, slipper socks. Uh, this one's weird. Locally made soap. Yo, actually, I've been buying, like, at the grocery store, they've got like these high end bar soaps that are like softer and like, like high end soap is actually really nice. I, you know, I, uh, I have like my lever 2000 or natural clover spring, whatever the Irish Springs one, they're okay, but I do have some nice soaps. They are way better. Yeah. Than the Irish spring shit. Way yeah. Like better. I've got like goat milk soap and stuff and like, it's just, it's softer. It's smoother. And like I, I will spend the extra two or $3 a bar. Cause the experience is nicer. 
All right, we're almost out of time. Question for you. Oh, you themed to- merchandise from their favorite show, movie, or podcast. Well, we need to get some Sip Talk we'll, merch out there. We'll, we'll work on we'll work on the merch. That's uh, I, that we'll was. We'll get a good some one, Sip Talk dildos. Uh, yeah, that's uh, we could do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, question for you: You an eggnog guy? No, not at all. You ever you ever had coquito? It's like a coconut. Uh, I, I just learned of what this is like a week ago. So yeah. this is combining my disdain for like dairy and heavy drinks with my disdain for coconut. <laughs> All right. You still should try it. Did you try it? No, I looked at the <laughs> recipe. and said, no. All right. Um, all right. Uh, you got to go. I got to go. We're out of time. I want to thank everybody for joining. And if you don't and already. For those who submitted the gift ideas, thank you. Thank you on that. Uh, subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. See you guys next time. Adios. That concludes this episode, the holiday gift-giving episode. Let me know if uh, we picked out some good gifts and if we missed anything that you would strongly suggest. Throw it in the comments. Looking forward to your suggestions. See you next time. I like PBR. I just got priced out of it.